Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video comes as a request from B Merrick D on uh, Discord, who wanted to make this kind of uh, radial expanding ring uh, effect using saturation in the scene, and it's a pretty good exercise on how UVs work and uh, and and masking in post process. So without further ado, let us get started. I've just scattered a bunch of blocks around the scene here, so uh, we can add some color and really see the saturation work. So it's all just not, you know, a pretty middle gray. And uh, the first thing we'll do, well, let's just right click, make ourselves a material. We'll call it the DSAT ring underscore mat. And we'll just open this up. So we're going to need a texture in order to make this effect work. So we're going to head down to the uh, texture pack, which is available on Gumroot. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And we want to find a mask. And the mask that we want is this scan line, uh, scan line underscore M. So we'll bring this up here and we'll get started making this material. So before we get started with the post-process stuff, we'll have to organize our, uh, our UVs here in order to display, to display as an expanding sort of ring. So we'll set our preview mesh to a plane here and we'll hold in U and click to get our texture coordinates. Now texture coordinates refer to the, uh, the coordinates of a texture in UV space. In fact, if we uh, start previewing this node, you can see here, these are the values as expressed in a material. We've got 0, 0 up on the top the, uh, the top left and 1, 1 in the bottom right. Not quite sure why it's upside down, but it doesn't really matter. And you see here, we've got the red up at the up at the x value, the x axis and y oh, green in the y value. Uh, this is because expressible in a material, our texture coordinates are a two vector. In other words, a red and a green, no blue. And we can see further sort of how texture coordinates work. If we get a, uh, like a multiplier and hold in two and click for a two vector, then we preview this multiply node. We can see that when we're set to zero, zero, we get just straight black. If we set them both to one, we'll get our regular uh, sort of ordinary texture coordinates displayed. But if we, for example, remove all the green, we'll get just the red, just the, the X axis values. And similarly, if we, uh, remove the red, we'll get the Y values, just the green. And each point in this uh, coordinate matrix here, so we'll stop previewing this, we'll just preview our two vector here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go, start previewing. So with G set to one, red set to zero, we just get all green. This is the green corner of the, of the coordinates. If we set them both to one, we'll just get the yellow, because uh, red and green make yellow in RGB space. Or RGB lighting, I should say, the color scheme. And if we set them both to zero, we'll get just uh, just black. So a two vector corresponds to a position in the texture coordinates zero to one range. Knowing this is important going forward because we're going to be doing a lot of tricky maths and stuff with uh, with texture coordinates. So right as we uh, get started here, I was sent a US set from uh, Merrick who showed me the, the, pro, the, the progress that he made so far. I didn't look at it until I'd made a, my own decent attempt and we were both on the same sort of track. So uh, we'll uh, start by coming out of this texture coordinates into a multiplier. And I'm not even gonna use constants. I'm just gonna do this inside the node. We wanna multiply it by two. And then we want to get a, uh, out of this multiplier, we need a, where are we? There we go, subtract. We wanna subtract uh, one from our uh, texture coordinates. Then we want to hold an M and click, we need another multiply. We'll multiply these values together. And that, when we hit preview, gives us this sort of values. So we're treating the middle of our uh, UV space here as the zeros. And the one values are stretching out all around the, uh, the edges here, up to the, up to the final edges. So we're getting our X values represented here from the middle of our UV and, our, and same with our, our Y values in the vertical. And this means that if we stop, uh, we'll stop previewing this multiply, Let's get a component mask. Where we're our component mask here. Remembering that our texture coordinates are just a two vector, so we'll only need the red and the green channel. If we get two of these guys, we'll just mask out the R and the G. Plug these in. Because remember, if we preview this multiply again, you can see the red here in the middle and the green here in the, uh, in, in the vertical. So if we just mask out the red, we'll get uh, maximum values where there are red. So there will be no red values here in the vertical where the Y values would be one. And therefore the, uh, the R values are zero. And similarly with our uh, green mask here, the same thing happens with, the, with all of the red information. So I'll make ourselves some space here. The next thing we'll do is add these values back to each other, which will 
uh, make our sort of basic radial pattern for our UVs. Just like that. And from here, let's stop previewing this, make ourselves a panner with uh, holding in P and click. We'll get ourselves a scalar. This will be our expand speed. And we'll also get a multiplier and another scalar. This will be our divisions. So it's how many rings are going to appear on the screen at once. And we'll default this to one, we'll get our expand speed at one. Plug in our speed to speed, our divisions into the B of this multiply, hook the multiply up to the panner, and then the texture, and then plug the result of our add into our coordinates. We should see uh, once we preview the texture. Start previewing. There we go. So we get the we get our uh, radial um, expanding UV pattern. Although we should invert, yeah, if we invert the expand speed, they'll come outwards. It's a bit more like we want. And I'm not quite happy with the with the uh, puddle sort of look here, how the rings thin as they get to the edge. Stop that. We can come here. Add a square root node, this little node that just gets us the square root values of everything that gets fed into it, and that regulates the uh, the rings going upwards. So this makes up the the uh, the mask here that we're going to use in our post processing. Although if you wanted to save yourself a node, you could also uh, let's just I'll multiply all of this. You can get rid of this multiply and uh, this subtract. Come straight out of the texture coordinates here. Uh, right click, we'll get a one minus and plug this into A. So that, then there's all of this add into the square root node like we had before. And we get a slightly different way uh, to produce a radial effect. In fact, we'll set the expansion speed back to one for this one. Yeah, so there are a few, a few different ways that you can do this, different ways that you can calculate UVs. I thought this is a, a pretty cool way to, to explore it and uh, get into it and experiment. A lot of people well, will either find texture coordinates just to be ridiculously annoying or uh, they really enjoy tinkering. I like the process of experimentation. Okay, so with all this set up, let's stop previewing this. I'll just clean up and get rid of these guys. And we'll do our uh, post-processing things. So we'll get our material node here and we want to set the domain to post-process. And then uh, we'll obviously need a scene, scene texture node because that's how we're going to get our actual scene back. We're able to change it to post process input zero. We we'll plug in the color just to make sure that it works. We get our regular, our regular scene shot here. So to set up our uh, saturation effect, we're gonna hold an L and get a lerp. Where is it? There it is. Use the result of our textures here as the alpha. And then we're gonna need two desaturation nodes coming out of this uh, scene texture node here. We'll plug these into our lerp as A and B. We also need uh, two scalars. We'll call this dsat1. We'll duplicate it. Call this one dsat2. Plug these in as our fraction and set one of them to one. Then our lerp into emissive color. Okay, so I'm still going backwards. I forgot to change this back to a negative one. And it might be a little bit subtle to see here in the preview, but we can just crank up these values. For example, if I go like minus five and Five. There we can see the the result of the effect uh, working in real time. So we'll set these back to a sensible sort of number. Hit save. And back in the editor. So if we hit play, here we are with the the first person character just in the scene, full of color blocks. Let's grab our post process. Go to details, materials. Let's come up here. Find my assets. There we go. Let's make an instance of our, our material here. With this plus, we want an asset reference in our post process volume. And we'll just drag this onto the field here. So here's the effect working beautifully in the editor in real time. And from here, we can open up our instance, play around with some of these values, such as the divisions. We can make them fewer, just like that. Or we can make tons and tons of rings as well. And our expand speed, if we keep adjusting, we can speed it up, slow it down. We have all this sort of control over the, the end result. And you can also get into your player pawn and you can uh, make a, a material parameter collection so that you can affect this with a button push or something. I'll leave a link to my crisis armor video in the description because that's that's a, an example of doing exactly that uh, in Unreal Engine. So thanks to BMARICD for the request. If you have any comments, suggestions or requests of your own, leave them in the comments in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.